big deal gently. Joy out here is giving them what they deserve. When we say deal gently, joy out here is health insurance for everybody's on America. See, Joy ain't hearing the same thing we hear when we say it. Herein lies the tragedy of the text. David has nowhere else to turn. By abdicating his responsibility, he is trapped in a corner to where Joab is the only hope he's got to deal gently with his son Absalom. Mm -hmm. mm. That's real bad way. Mm -hmm. God, Whatever role we play in a young person's life, mm. be it father, mother, uncle, aunt, cousin, or role model, we cannot expect folk to deal gently in a role that's exclusively reserved for us. Oh my Lord. David was the only one qualified to deal gently in that situation. And he may have advocated that position when he did nothing when Amnon raped Tamar. See, we always look at the immediate, but daddy did nothing when, when, when one of the sons raped his daughter. So doing nothing is not doing gently. It pains me to read this text because David's in a mess. If it, if it were simply a military battle, David's instructions would have been clear. But his child is involved on the other side. Therefore, he orders Joab, Abishai, and Ittai not as a military leader, but as a father. But it's too late. My Lord. In fact, if you ask Joab, given the way he swiftly took Absalom's life, he might tell you he did deal gently. David is asking a man who cannot uh, understand the concept in a situation that has ruled out dealing gently as a possibility. See, when David says deal gently, for my sake, dealing gently is already out of the equation. Mm. Let's be honest. This is a little Joab and all of us. Yeah. <laughs> unless, we, unless we recognize someone else's is humanity, and the less we recognize someone else's humanity, the more the Joab in us is free to reveal itself. Mm. Are we not called to deal gently? Are we not called to be compassionate, loving examples of Jesus? Mm. Are we not called to deal gently with folk who have not necessarily dealt gently with us? God does not need us if we're going to pass on to someone else the job that God has called us to do. Amen. David, like many of us, have been guilty of not dealing guilty with the ones we're charged to love. Sometimes we yell when we should hug. We criticize when we should pray. We make a big deal out of things that should not be no big deal at all. Oh, mm -hmm. amen. A number of times we tell those closest to us that we love them should exceed the number of times we remind them that they left the water on last night. Oh. <laughs> In a world that advocates brutality while it hides behind the skirt of justice, if we are not the standard bearer for dealing gently, who is? Oh, right, right. Oh. So the Lesson two. In order to deal gently with other folk, we've got to be able to deal gently with ourselves. All right, right, right. Come on. We read the story. So much of David's grief for his son was his own guilt and grief for himself. Mm. Right. We have a way of holding on to certain things that make it difficult to deal gently with us. Ooh, come on now. That's right. And if I can't deal gently with me, you ain't got a chance. That's right. Things we need to let go. We wear like fine jewelry, 
protect it with us everywhere we go for all to see. Mm -hmm. And then at night, we put it in a safe, secure place so we can easily retrieve it the next morning and put it back on. Oh, mm -hmm. right. right. Like David, we've all made some mistakes in our lives. Mm. We've got some painful memories that we want right. to file under. Ooh. If I could do it all over again, I'd do it differently. Right, right. But that's not how life works. Oh, right. Come on, right. We have a hard time letting go. Mm. Right. Past failures, past mistakes. Right. Hurt that we've caused other folks. Things done to us. But I also recognize all that. He just said, I can tell you to let it go, but it's hard to let it go. Because let it go opens you up to some other kind of fears. Right. Because you don't know what's on the other side of you let it go. Right. At right. least you know it's nonsense. Come right. on now. Right. Right. Come on now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Years of pain make it difficult to deal gently with yourself. Mm. So, My that, Lord. so that you can deal gently with others. Mm. We serve a God that wants to help us carry those burdens because God has strength that we don't have. Time is filled with swift transition. Not a earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. We must view the mistakes, the mishaps, and the unnecessary pain that may have caused and been caused by somebody else. That's looking around in our lives, not as something we need to do over. Uh -uh. Because we can't do it over. Uh -uh. You don't get a do-over in life, but rather something that God can use to make us stronger and bring us closer to God's love. See, that's the that things you're carrying around, feeling guilty about, holding on to. You did it. It was you. Come on. There might be some extenu extenuating circumstances, but you did it! Yeah. You're guilty! <laughs> you can give me all of what happens all you want, but you did it! Come on, yeah. but, you're, but while you're trying to sweep it under the rug, pretending you didn't do it, yeah. you have another option. You can give it to God. You can turn it over to the one who specializes in bearing burdens. God has a long and distinguished history of comforting us through our guilt. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever nonsense you want to bring to God right now, you ain't the first. Mm. And you won't be the last. Yeah. Mm. Don't you know that you serve a God whose love for you is greater than the guilt you're carrying around? Was it not God who asks anything too hard for the Lord? Mm, but believe it or not, that includes that guilt that you and I are carrying around right now. Mm. Trying to convince yourself and others that everything is all right. And you know deep down in your soul, I don't care how much you're smiling and laughing right now, you know it ain't all right. Oh. You, you, know, you know that's some unresolved pain, some unresolved hurt. Some of the rest of the in your soul. If you can't deal gently with yourself, you cannot deal gently with others. Mm, go ahead. Now, Preach. there's a brutal irony about the human condition in that our virtues and our vices are indestructibly linked. <laughs> now, here's, here's the irony it is through our virtues that we induce arrogance and hubris. While it's through our vices that can lead to humility mm. on a road paid by God. Come on, come on. One last thing before I take my seat. Lesson three. We must deal gently with others because that's how God deals with us. Mm. Texts are based on Absalom's failed insurrection. Now, based on the law, the rule, the standard, he should have received a death sentence. Mm -hmm. But David's compassionate plea was not based on the law. Mm -hmm. When David said, deal gently, it was based on love. Amen. 
And although David may have waited too long to recognize the need to deal gently, his request should always be our request because that is how Jesus has dealt with us. We have already been provided with the ultimate example of what it means to deal gently with a situation when the rule of society may dictate something different. That's what Father forgive them for what, for what they know not what they do is getting at. That's dealing gently. See, that's another thing too. Dealing gently may cause you some pain. Dealing gently may cause you some discomfort. Dealing gently you know, may cause you a little uncomfortable. But that's the standard. Because God has made it standard. Thank God we don't give what we deserve. The judgment breaks down on us. It is Jesus who intercedes on our behalf saying, for my sake, deal gently with that one. Oftentimes, we need, reminding, we need reminding of the one whose love, grace, and mercy is still sufficient. Mm -hmm. Maybe the world has dealt harshly with you. Mm. But, but, but I drop by to remind you that we serve a God mm. who knows how to deal gently at the critical hour. Mm. See, when the Pharisees caught the woman in the very act of adultery, mm. Jesus didn't give her what she deserved. He dealt gently mm. with her situation. Mm. When Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, Jesus didn't give Peter what he deserved. He dealt gently with Peter. When Paul, on his way to uh, persecute another church, Jesus didn't give Paul what he deserved. That's right. He dealt gently That's right. with Paul. Jesus understands firsthand the concept of dealing gently. Born, hopeless, misunderstood by his family, rejected by his race, arrested by a posse, convicted on trumped up charges, beaten by his enemies, nailed to a cross, wounded in his side. He didn't give us what we deserve. He dealt gently with us. See, the inconvenience of deal gently does not excuse us from the tough struggle to do so. So deal gently with anyone in the human family you disapprove of. Still got to deal gently. Mm -hmm. What does it merit a person if, 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 if one loves only his or her friends? Come on, man. That's right. Love your enemies. Amen. Deal gently with those who despitefully use you. Indeed, it is the very call of Christ that leads us more and more away from the exclusive loyalty of blood family and more and more into the loyalty of the human family. Come on. But when I read this text, church, I see it not through the lens of a pastor and a theologian, but I see it as one for whom David's petition to Joab, Abishai, and Isatai mm. is also my petition for myself. Come on, man. I can say without hesitation that God has dealt gently with me. Mm. Thank God I don't always get what I deserve. See, when, I, when David says deal gently, and then he's praying for Byron right there, when I've been consumed by revenge, God has added love. Yeah. When I've been consumed with uncertainty, God has added faith. 